Hello everyone. In this video tutorial, I will guide you through a continuous process example that has been created in Super Pro Designer. If you don't have a copy of Super Pro Designer, make sure to visit our website www.intelligent.com where you can download an evaluation version of the tool. This tutorial is intended for users dealing with continuous or semi-continuous type of processes such as biofuels and environmental type of processes among others. However, before watching this video, it's recommended to watch the batch process tutorial videos as many of the fundamental modeling concepts are discussed there. Some of these concepts will be discussed in this video but to a lower extent of detail. The focus of this example is more to explain how to model continuous processes and how to handle recycle loops and achieve convergence for these loops. The various differences between continuous and batch process models will also be discussed. Let's now switch to the example I'll be discussing in this tutorial. Here you see a simple continuous process that has been created in SuperPro. The model has been built to represent the production of biomass, such as baker's yeast for example, and to separate it from the main solution. Notice as well that a recycle stream has been added in order to minimize the biomass loss and increase the substrate consumption. To start, a concentrated glucose solution is added. However, this fit is diluted using a custom mixer to a concentration of 90 grams per liter of glucose. Notice that the custom mixer not only has the option to achieve a target mass composition or concentration, but also mixing specifications can be specified in various ways. Next, we have a fermenter where fermentation is carried out. Fermentation was modeled in a simple continuous stoichiometric fermentation operating at 37 degrees Celsius with air supplied at an average aeration rate of 1 BVM. Through the volume stop, the average liquid residence time was specified at 16 hours. If we now switch to the reaction step, we can view the stoichiometric reaction used. The stoichiometric reaction was specified on a mass basis as glucose reacting with oxygen in order to produce biomass carbon dioxide, metabolites, and water. In this case, it's assumed that biomass is the product of this reaction and that the metabolites are byproducts which are inhibitory to the reaction. Furthermore, a reaction extent of 90% with respect to the reaction limiting component was used for this example. Also, a heat of reaction of minus 3700 kilocalories per kilogram was assumed. Next, a centrifugal separator is used to remove biomass and a product and waste stream are generated. Also, notice that the waste stream has been recycled back to the feed in order to minimize product loss. Notice as well that a perch has been added to the model. The reasoning for this will be explained shortly in the video. Let's now open up a new process file to build the same model from scratch. To open a new process file within SuperPro Designer, you need to click on the Add New Process File button on the top left-hand corner of the window. When you do that, the Process Operating Mode dialog pops up. Here you can select which type of process you'd like to model, batch or continuous. Let's select the continuous option and click OK. This brings us to the main process flowsheet area. The first step to begin this model is to register the pure components which are going to be used. For that, let's select the Register Pure Components option within the Tasks menu. Through this window, we can register the components we're going to use. Using the Designer Data Bank, I can search for glucose and biomass and register them to my model file. To register, I can either double click on the component or click on the register button. We'll also have to register carbon dioxide since it'll be produced during fermentation. Besides carbon dioxide and biomass, some metabolites will also be generated during the fermentation. Since the component metabolites is not part of the designer data bank, we'll have to create a new component by clicking on this button. Through this window that appears, I can then give the component a name 
and then I'll need to assign some default property values to this component. For that, I'm going to select ethanol from the drop-down list. Let's now click OK to return to the previous window. By choosing ethanol, I assign its properties to my newly created component, but I can always access the component's properties to change its values. Let's now click OK to return to the flow sheet. The next step in building this model would be to add the unit procedures we're going to use. The first of these units is going to be a custom mixer which I can select by choosing unit procedures, mixing, bulk flow, and then the custom mixing option. I can now click on any empty area of the flow sheet and the custom mixer will be added. The next unit we'll need to add is the fermenter. For vessel procedures, it's important to select the continuous form from the vessel options as both a continuous and batch option exists. To choose the continuous form, click on unit procedures and then select the option continuous reaction stoichiometric and finally choose the fermenter as the vessel procedure. You can then click in the empty area of the flow sheet to add the fermenter. Notice that you could have also selected the fermentation unit in batch mode from this option. This is not suitable if you're building a continuous process. However, SuperPro allows the possibility to combine a cyclical or batch process unit in a continuous model. In that case, you would then have to select this option instead of the continuous one, and then schedule the operations within the procedure relative to each other. However, it's not possible to schedule operations relative to other procedures. Let's now go ahead and add a centrifugation unit by selecting it from the list and then clicking on the flow sheet. The next step in the model involves the addition of streams. To add streams, we need to change from select mode to add streams mode by clicking on this button here. Then to add an inlet stream, double click in an empty area of the flow sheet and then click on the inlet port of your unit procedure in order to terminate the stream. The same can be done for the dilution stream. Notice that to add elbows, you simply need to click once in the flow sheet. Next, to add an intermediate stream, you first need to click on the output port of the first procedure and then click on the input port of the second one. In general, streams need to be drawn in the same direction of the flow. Furthermore, for continuous vessel procedures, which applies to the fermenter in this model, the bottom outlet port must be used for removing the liquid material. In addition, the top port is dedicated to venting, like in the batch vessel procedures. A convenient way to view port dedication is by bringing up the help facility of a procedure. Let's bring up the help facility of the centrifuge by first changing from stream to select mode, and then right-clicking on the centrifuge and selecting the help facility from the context menu. Through this facility, you can see port dedication in detail. Notice that we have only one feed stream and three output streams, the top one being dedicated to oil, the middle one being dedicated to water, and the bottom one being dedicated to solids. The help facility is available for the various components of SuperPro Designer. Therefore, when in doubt, make sure to make use of this facility. Let's now finalize stream initialization by drawing two streams for the aqueous waste and the other for the biomass product. To exit the stream addition mode, you can always press escape in your keyboard. Before moving on, let's also add a stream for the air addition in the fermenter. With the stream initialization finalized, we can now proceed to initialize the procedures. An initial difference that you'll notice between the batch and continuous models is that for the continuous type, activities are not scheduled in contrast to the batch processes. If we, for example, double click on any of these icons, you'll see that we no longer have the option to add or remove operations. Instead, you get the dialog of the single operation. Furthermore, notice that there's no scheduling tab in the continuous type of processes because nothing is scheduled and the user doesn't have to worry about scheduling links or master-slave relationships for the duration. 
Another notable difference is that in continuous processes there are no charge or transfer operations, so we initialize component addition directly in the stream by double clicking on it. For instance, we can initialize the concentrated glucose feed stream by double clicking here and then specifying the details through this dialog. This stream will consist of glucose and water with a mass composition of 70 and 30% respectively. Furthermore, we now have to specify the mass flow rate, which we can do in this area, and it's going to be 1000 kilograms per hour for this example. Let's now proceed to initialize the procedures, starting with the mixing unit. Through this dialog, we need to specify the dilution of glucose, which we can do by setting the output composition for that component glucose to 90 grams per liter. Besides the composition, we also need to allocate water in the adjustable stream. Furthermore, before we proceed, notice that besides setting the output composition, mixing can be specified in several other ways. Before I continue to initialize the fermenter, I'm first going to revisit the Pure Components Edit dialog to adjust the intracellular water content of the biomass. The intracellular water content of biomass can be adjusted in this area to any value that represents your particular case. For this example, we're going to keep it at 80%. Let's now double click on the fermenter to proceed with initialization. Through this tab, you can specify the operating conditions for the fermentation, and we're going to leave almost all of the default values for this example. However, through this area, I need to specify that I'm going to carry out aeration using air, so I'm going to allocate air to that stream, and then I need to change the aeration rate to 1 VVM. Next, I need to specify the liquid's residence time to 16 hours instead of 4. This value will be used to size the equipment. Through the Reactions tab, I can then specify the fermentation reaction, which can be done by clicking on this button. Through this dialog that pops up, I can then specify my reaction. On the left hand side, I need to specify my reactants, glucose and oxygen. And on the right hand side, I need to specify my products, biomass, carbon dioxide, metabolites, and water. Furthermore, I have the option to specify the equation based in mass or molar stoichiometric coefficients. For this example, I'm going to specify it in mass and the coefficients are going to be 100 of glucose, 150 for oxygen, 40 for biomass, 195 for carbon dioxide, 5 for metabolites, and 10 for water. Next, I need to specify the extent of the reaction, which is going to be 90% for this example. Also, I'm given the option to ignore or include the reaction heat. For this example, we're going to include it, and it's going to be minus 3,700 kilocalories per kilogram for the reference component of oxygen at a reference temperature of 37 degrees Celsius. Let's now proceed to initialize our last procedure, the centrifuge. Through this tab, you can specify the type of removal that you're going to carry out and other material-specific information. Let's leave all the default values for this example. Through the Materials Balance tab, you can specify the solid components removal percentage, which will be 99% for the biomass in this example. Furthermore, in the Solids Concentration in Solid Streams option, we need to increase the value to 400 grams per liter, because under the conditions of having intracellular water, the concentration we specify must represent wet cell mass instead of dry cell mass. At this point, we're ready to carry out the calculations, which can be done by clicking on the Calculate button. Notice that when the calculations are finalized, the following message is displayed in this area. You can now proceed to click on the streams to view the output results. However, another option to view the results is by displaying the value in the stream itself. This can be done by right-clicking on the stream, selecting Style, Edit Style, and then clicking Display also the InfoTag option. 
This concludes part one of this video tutorial series. Please make sure to watch part two where I'll discuss recycle loops and their convergence. Thanks for your attention. Also, notice that all the waste has been recycled back to the beginning, 